Hello and welcome to our service this morning or our reflection this morning. I'm the Reverend Dr. Joanne Mercer from the Anglican Parish of Twillingate. I'm filming today in my house. Um, this is my paint. This is the painting of my grandmother that um, for those of you who are in church, I talked a bit about on um, All Saints Day. And this is a painting that my nephew, uh, Jonathan, did as a part of a series he did uh, looking at, uh, I think, images of halos and holiness and how it's depicted in paintings. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure he will tell me about that. Um, but this is at the end of my hallway in my house and it's a painting of my Nan Reed and Nan Stockless uh, and um and it's very special to me. And I wanted to film here today um, because I wanted to talk about some very particular things. It's only a little over a week ago uh, when many of us were glued uh, to the news, uh, watching and waiting for the results from the American election. Um, those result waiting <laughs> seemed to take a long time. And I was probably uh, amongst a lot of other people and maybe particularly women, but uh, people generally uh, who wept um, when they listened to the speeches uh, delivered uh, that night and particularly the, the speech by uh, Vice President-elect Harris. And I remember at a particular point when she came on the stage and I was watching on the CBC and uh, they, they panned out into the audience and there were um, many very young women and young women of color weeping. And to say, I even start to cry now. <laughs> I can't look at someone crying, it makes me cry. And it was just so powerful and so moving. And, uh, you know, you sort of imagine them sort of seeing somebody um, like them, someone who looks like them, uh, who comes from a background like them, uh, who was able to, to make this achievement. And maybe they thought it was never possible. Maybe they'd never seen anyone like them in those kinds of uh, positions. And it was very, uh, very moving um, to sort of think about all the, the firsts that she checks off. First woman, uh, first woman of first person of African American descent, uh, first person of Indian American descent. And, and it was very, very powerful. But then, you know, I sort of thought, this really shouldn't come as a surprise to us, uh, for those of us in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Because, you know, we really do have a long story of very powerful, strong women being called by God and equipped by God. And maybe we don't tell those stories enough. Maybe that's the problem, I would say to myself. Maybe we don't tell those stories enough that these women are so moved uh, at the thought of a woman like them being in power. And, you know, it is amazing how much and how often our electionary really feeds into our lived experiences. And so this week, the first reading from our electionary is from the book of Judges. And it is just one of those stories, or part of one of those stories, about uh, a woman being called into a position of power many, 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 many <laughs> uh, centuries ago. In the reading from Judges 4, the Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Hehu died. So the Lord sold them into the land of the into the hand of the king Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Cesera, who lived in Harosheth Ha Golim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. For he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Labadoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came to her for judgment. She sent and commanded Barak, son of Abanom, of, from Kedesh and Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. 
I will draw out Cesara and the general of Jabin's army to meet you by the Wadi Kashyan and his chariots, sorry, and his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. This is the word of the Lord. So this is a very interesting story. It's just a little part of the story of Deborah, and it's the only part we get uh, in today's lectionary. And there's a few things I want to point out to you. Um, so Deborah is a, is a woman, obviously, and she's a judge. She's a leader. So a judge would be sort of both a political leader and, uh, as it is apparent from this passage and what follows, also a military leader. And it's interesting here how she's described. She's described as a prophetess, so she's a prophet. And then the usual uh, translation is that she's wife of Labadoth. Now, the Hebrew really sort of says she's a woman, wife, could be wife or woman, and of, of Labadoth. Now, they're interpreting Labadoth to be a name. So somehow, um, the the translators of, of this piece of scripture, even though Deborah is a judge, even though she is a prophet, uh, they still seem to feel the need to orient her identity around that of a, of a man. But this could also very well be translated that she is a, a fierce woman or a woman of fire, a woman of power. It could be a description uh, of who she is, of the kind of woman she is, rather than to whom she belongs. And I think that that is a very strong possibility. So we have, at that time, Deborah, who is a prophet, who's a very strong, fierce, powerful woman who is judging in Israel. She's the person to whom they went uh, to settle legal disputes and to settle um, uh, yeah, discussions between the various tribes. And so this piece of scripture has her calling up Barak, uh, who's the commander of the army, uh, and telling him what to do, telling him where to go, and that God will give to him um, the uh, the army of, uh, of Jabin in the army uh, commander Caesarea. What we don't see is what comes right after this verse. Because Barak says, Barak says, I will only go I will only go if you go with me. If you go and lead the army, if you go before us, then I will go. I won't go without you. Which again uh, says something about the power that he sort of thought she commanded. Uh, and um, yeah, so it's a very different kind of image than we sort of think of as women in scripture. A woman who's a prophet, a woman who is powerful and fierce and strong, a woman that the leader of the army defers to. And so she says, well, fine, I will go before you, but in so doing, God will give uh, Caesar over to the hand of a woman. In so you sort of think at this point in the story that that means that Deborah is going to be the one who's going to, to be the conqueror and Deborah is going to be the one who is going to kill the commander of the army. When actually it's another woman who enters very briefly into the story, J.L., uh, who lures Cesara into her tent and, uh, and kills him and, and so um, wins the battle uh, for the Israelites. It's a sad thing to me that a lot of folk don't know the story of Deborah. Uh, we know the story of David and, and Goliath. You know, we know the story of Samson and his strength. We know the stories of these powerful men who led battle. Um, but this sort of fierce woman is a story that we don't often tell. And so that's why I want us to talk about this today, because I think for us to imagine that it is possible for people like Vice President-elect Harris to lead, 
um, or for us to imagine that women should have equal places in our um, in our house, in the province, or in parliament, um, then we need to tell stories about how God has throughout the centuries, throughout time, called women and equipped women to positions of leadership. That not just women that that these are probably women, uh, you know, as often now called. This is these are probably brown women, women uh, who were minorities. Um, there are lots of pieces of scripture about these women. There are also lots of pieces of scripture about uh, men who don't sort of fit into the stereotypical notions of what we think a strong man of leadership is. And God called them and equipped them. And they answered God's call. So I think in remembering the story of Deborah today, it's important for us to remember that she is one among a myriad of witnesses that God has called and who answered God's call, who stood up, who were brave enough um, to stand against what people thought they could or couldn't do, to be who God said they could be, who God wanted them to be, who God equipped them to be. And I think that's an important message um, for young men and women everywhere to hear, for old men and women for everywhere, uh, everywhere to hear, that we have this amazing how to witnesses like I have my nan to remind me uh, every day when I when she greets me here in my house that there are so many strong women who have gone before us and uh, Vice President elect Harris mentioned that in her speech um, that she was able to do this because of the many who went before us so what I want to do now um, as our form of prayer today as I found a litany recalling some of uh, those amazing women, and this is a litany uh, written by the friars of, of St. Francis, and um, and I have adapted it uh, to include uh, names of women uh, who can be found in our Book of Alternative Services and our list of saints. So some women from Canada who have provided amazing uh, witnesses to us who, when God called, stood up and said yes and dared to believe just as Deborah did, just as God is calling us um, to dare to believe, every one of us, men, women, um, whatever gender we may refer to ourselves as, whatever background we may come from, whatever nationality we may claim, whoever we may be with all of our uniqueness and all of the things that we may think are our weaknesses, but God knows all of those, and God calls us to use them um, to meet the needs of our community and to serve as God has chosen for us to serve. So let us listen now and pray and give thanks to this wonderful list of witnesses. God needed a woman to begin a journey that demonstrated faith and belief in God's promise, a witness that God's promises come true. God chose Sarah, and Sarah stood up. God needed a woman to demonstrate the power of, con of conversion and service to God's people. God chose Ruth, and Ruth stood up. God needed a woman to exemplify persistent prayer with faithfulness to God. God chose Hannah, and Hannah stood up. God needed a woman to risk her life as a model of bravery, who sought God's guidance in times of difficulty, who had unbounded confidence in God's providence. God chose Esther. And Esther stood up. God needed a woman to be a prophet and to demonstrate wisdom, courage, and a compassionate zeal for justice. God chose Deborah, and Deborah stood up. God needed a woman who had lived a long life and who had dedicated her entire life to God, a true witness of dedication and hope. God chose Anna, and Anna stood up. 
God needed a woman to be the mother of his son, a woman of yes to God, of God's will, a woman who would sing aloud her magnificent to the God who had chosen her. God chose Mary of Nazareth, and Mary stood up. God needed a woman to be a model of welcome, to acknowledge Mary as the chosen one, to be the mother of John, the voice who cried out in the wilderness. God chose Elizabeth, and Elizabeth stood up. God needed a woman, a stranger, to enter into a moment of relationship with Jesus that changed her life, to be a model of holy conversation. God chose the Samaritan woman, and the Samaritan woman stood up. God needed a woman to follow Jesus, to listen to his word, to truly become a disciple, to be the first to announce the good news of Jesus that Jesus had risen. God chose Mary Magdalene, and Mary stood up. All through time, God needed women of courage and strong faith. God needed women to serve the poor and to show us God's great love and mercy. God chose Mother Teresa of Calcutta and Dorothy Day, and they stood up. God needed dedicated women to begin new movements within the church. God chose women of vision. Here are some Canadian examples. Emily Achbaum, foundress of the community of the Sisters of the Church. Molly Brandt, matron among the Mohawks. Roberta Elizabeth Tilton, founder of the Women's Auxiliary of the Canadian Church. Marie de la, la Incarnation, educator and spiritual teacher in New France. Marguerite Bourgeoise, educator in New France. Hannah Greer Kuhn, founder of the Society of um, of St. John the Divine. Florence Lee Kim Oi, the first woman priested in the Anglican Church, of uh, the Anglican Communion. And there were many others who were pioneers, who began new movements within the church, who taught God's children and nursed the sick, who spread the good news through lives of prayer and service. God chose women for service and leadership. And these chosen women stood up. For years and years, women of every age, race, background, and nation heard and continue to hear God's invitation to stand up. For the power of their witness, we give thanks. Amen.